As soon as they, uh, the government lets on what the end game is, um, the values of everything will change dramatically. Uh, specifically, precious metals, well, because they're currency. Cash means you're a tax cheat. Hey, Tim, how you doing? Not too bad. I'm here to pick up some uh, silver uh, George Washington quarters. I'm still stacking that guardhouse box. But I also wanted to ask you, about that $600 requirement that the Democrats are trying to get through. I guess now it's $10,000. Well, the way it works, what's going it, on? It's, it was any account that in a calendar year has $600 in it that opens the door to the IRS, okay? Pretty much to do anything they feel like doing, okay? Um, so let's say you make a, let's see, what's, that's like $50. You make a $50 deposit. They'll project that over 12 months, okay? And they'll say, well, you know, he made a $50 deposit this month, so if he makes one every month, that's $600, so put him on the list. And then they look at every transaction, every transaction. And, you know, they're not hiring 80,000 IRS agents for any reason other than to audit everybody. And they'll start with any Trump supporters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, it, it's going to be a political tool. Guaranteed it's going to be a political tool. Mm -hmm. And Janet Yellen had the gall to say, um, we're going to find those high income tax cheats. $600 in a calendar year, it must be a high income tax cheat. Okay? And she literally said that. And she was being questioned by a woman who's a senator from Wyoming. And um, every word out of her mouth was shocking, okay? So now they're backing off. So they yeah. say, okay, it's gonna be $10,000. So people think it's every $10,000 transaction they're gonna be looking at. No, that's not the way it works. If your account has accumulated $10,000 in a calendar year, that opens the door for them to look at everything in your account. Now, here's, here's where they, the people don't understand. $10,000 divided by 12 is $833, okay? So once you make an $833 deposit, that's when that opens the door to the IRS because they, they projected over 12, 12 months. months. That's the way they've always done everything, okay? Um, and they will look at every transaction because now you're really a high income tax cheat. It, it, you know, look at the, the people that they're, it's going to affect. Anybody who sells anything online is going to be affected. Mm. Um, so let's, let's say you sell stuff on eBay. Yeah. Okay? Everybody sells something on eBay I you know, one time or another. <laughs> right. Or Amazon or mm. Etsy or one of these other sites. Um, every one of those transactions is going to be looked at as a source of tax revenue. Okay, Because that's income to you. They don't care what your expenses are. Like my son sells, you know, these autograph photos, and you know sometimes they'll be listed for, um, you know, it's all kinds of sports figures he does. But if they're listed for three years and they finally sell, it's something he listed three years ago when the shipping was maybe three dollars to send one. Right now it's close to five dollars to send one, so he may be losing money on this stuff, but they don't care. They don't care if you don't have perfect records. They will consider that all income. And they've done that to me before. That's why I know this. That's why I keep, I'm here till two in the morning doing that's paperwork. That's right. You're, you're here to some ungodly hour. And it's because yeah, of the paperwork. It's the paperwork. To cover your, yeah, and your there's, butt. There's no way I could possibly do my taxes correctly any year. And it's, you know, in the last seven years, I've been estimating this and estimating. And that's mm -hmm. the worst thing you can do. Is once you estimate, you're, you're spending, you're way overspending in taxes. So any of the, so if I buy some of these silver eagles or whatever, and I decide I, I want to, I want to sell them, yep. sell them online, sell them on Facebook marketplace. They're going to want to well, check everything you do. Let's say that you come in to sell me a tube of silver eagles. Okay. And you know, I'm buying it for $600 just to use a figure. Um, and I send you the money through Zelle. That's a trigger. Yeah, that's a trigger.
or you know they'll say oh let's uh, take a look at the zell transactions and you've got other transactions you you sort sold something at a yard sale and the person said oh you have zell i just paid you and it was thirty dollars and then maybe somebody else at the same yard sale bought something for fifty dollars they will look at those transactions and in that month they add up to eight hundred and thirty three dollars or you're doing a job an it job for somebody right and they say okay um, is a check all right, or do you want a credit card payment, or what? You say, well, any of the three, whatever you want to pay, cash, check, credit card, that goes into the, into the mix. If it's $833 in any month, that opens the door to the IRS. Now, I pay my taxes. I claim all the income I have. I, I keep it honest. But that's the point. It's a matter of government intrusion into our lives. That's right. There's no privacy anymore. No privacy. No, not at all. But um, it'd be worth it for people to read the Patriot Act because it's been revised a few times. Um, there are ways they can kick your door down. And, you know, let's, let's say, for example, uh, you used a credit card in Washington last January 6th as you were passing through. You used a credit card to buy gas. Okay and never went to the Capitol, okay? you're on a list. You are on a list. And um, so they may, you may get a, a visit from the FBI wanting to know, what were you doing in Washington, D.C. on last January 6th? And you say, well, you know, I was going to go to this rally, but, um, you know, I passed by there. There was no place to park, and that doesn't matter. Now you're on another list. So how are we going to be able to avoid this? We use the only tool that's left to us, which is uh, congressional elections. That's the only tool. What do we do when it comes to like stacking and buying? I mean, should we be doing this in cash only? Oh, cash is a big problem here because I have to deposit it in the bank because I have to pay my bills with a check or pay them online. And um, you know, I, I can't run to the bank every day because I'm, I'm open when the bank's open and I'm, I'm here when the bank's closed. So I, you know, I have a hard time depositing cash and they charge for me to deposit cash. I used to think my account was a considered a business account. Um, a few years ago, it was converted to a sole proprietorship. So as far as they're concerned, every transaction is a personal transaction, even though it says on my deposit slip coin and stamp shop. They don't care about that either. And that's because the IRS is bearing down on the banks. The IRS has been bearing down to the foreign account laws, the FACTA laws on every bank in Europe. You know, they have way too much power now. I mean, you know, yes. you know, Lois Lerner told everybody yeah, they have no, they have way, way too much power. They can use it as a political tool. Say for instance, I wanted to sell some of my silver or gold, which I don't, but if I did, and someone paid me cash, they can't track that. Well, I don't put names on every transaction. The city requires us to put down names and addresses and stuff for everything you sell. Um, you know, I have a different, maybe a different set of standards than the city requires. Right, right. Because frequently I have customers of mine come in and sell something uh, that they bought here. So, you know, the city's only trying to catch people who are stealing things. So I don't really see the necessity of putting it on the city's form, but I do log every transaction because it has to go into inventory. But um, they're not going to get your name from here. That's why they want to get it from the bank. Outside the bank, outside of the store. Say, for instance, I wanted to um, have someone do some work on my house. Yep. And they were willing to have me pay them in some silver not trackable i would say that's not trackable although the person who does the work for you has to is just... is supposed to be logging his income that's true i'm not talking about tax evasion okay i'm talking about the government seeing our transactions it's a big difference there yeah that's the next step because they are they're looking at all your your purchases as well as your, what you're depositing. Everything you're selling, yes. everything you're buying. This is one of the reasons why I advocate to be the bank. Get that currency out of the public bank. Store that and use that. That's the um, 
the one thing the IRS is after more than anything else, cash transactions. Cash means you're a tax cheat. They're after the taxes more than anything else. And that's why we have a president who said, this three and a half trillion dollar bill will cost zero. He really believes that because what's in the three and a half trillion dollar bill? Lots and lots of new taxes, lots of taxes. As soon as they, uh, the government lets on what the end game is, um, the values of everything will change dramatically. Uh, specifically precious metals well, because they're currency. Um, the value of the dollar will probably, I think it will go up if it's being taken away rather than go down. Um, Initially. In inflation yeah. will be the killer because mm, inflation okay. is based on uh, pure economic uh, you know, uh, laws, if you want to call them that, um, that a government can't overturn. Okay. Uh, supply and demand is one of those things, and, and um, you know, as long as people stick to the laws of nature, <laughs> you can resist the government just so far. And mm -hmm. in, in the last G7 meetings, every country in Europe was talking about digital currencies, and it'll start in the central bank. And I think. Uh, it's going to be done for settlements between uh, nations yeah, at first. Yeah, and, and, you know, and we're, will... we're the Federal Reserve Bank is one baby step away from this. And um, I think they're, they're, they've already come to an agreement of how they're going to handle the digital currency. Every central bank in, in the world that does business with us will be, you know, look, and, you know, developing countries will look at whoever their partner is, mm -hmm. whoever they do the most business with, whoever they have the most citizens with, like, you know, France was all over North Africa for a long period of time. And uh, they'll do whatever they're doing. Appreciate yes. that, Tim. And I need some of those silver quarters. Can you give me some? Yes, you have competition. Just came in the door. Oh, I'm here first. Though. <laughs> right. Thanks, Tim.